What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Collective Comics and the Lights Comics Action Podcast. We're diving into episode number 44 today. We went to go see Blue Beetle. We did. <laughs> we went to go see Blue Beetle, and we're going to dive into the movie with the not spoiler free <laughs> yeah. review. I was going to say spoilers right now off the bat. Yeah, we Gotta always have to it. hit him with the spoilers. As usual, I'm joined by the homie Jake. Homie Jake. Hey, guys. And How hey, you guys. Doing, man? Hey, guys. <laughs> Da bears, da <laughs> da bears. Uh man. So this was a movie that we didn't see together. No, no, no. We didn't see together. I don't know if I should spoil the biggest thing yet. What? What is? Are we going till the end? Are you? What is the um, biggest thing? Because I'm thinking the end is the biggest thing. The biggest thing is I did not fall asleep. Oh, in the middle of the movie. <laughs> Oh you know, yeah. I'm, I'm kinda known for like falling asleep <laughs> yeah. now at this point. I feel like um it's it's my thing. But this movie I was pretty intrigued. I was pretty encapsulated. That into this surprises movie. me a little bit because I feel like this is um well we were a couple days ago from when we were recording this, we were on Tommy over at World of War Comics. We did yes. a live stream with him, so Go over to World of War's uh, YouTube channel and check that out. So we might reference that a few times. But um, like I said over there, I felt like this was a little bit more slow, but like not in a bad way. Yeah. Like I feel like the story, like we didn't get to like a bunch of action until later in the movie. And there was a lot of stuff in between, but I thought it was, it was filled wisely. Yeah. I feel like uh, I, ne- I didn't, I definitely didn't think that it was slow. Right. You know, yeah. So, which kind of surprises me because I feel like I'm usually the, uh, it's too slow. It's too slow. Yeah. It's too slow. This was too long. Yeah. You know, not like, enough trim the fat. Yeah, exactly. I'm want, usually that guy. You just want guy. a two-hour fight scene. That's <laughs> what exactly. you're looking for. Pretty much, you know, but I do like the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I just didn't notice it because I, I really don't know all that much. I know more now after the movie about Blue Beetle than i do than i did before the movie you know i knew a couple you know key things that i kind of felt like i needed to know and that like that's that's about it right um but i also tried we both tried very hard to to go into this movie pretty like clear-headed yeah you could say i feel like that's definitely how i went into it like i was talking to my wife before i left or went to it i was like i'm just gonna go into it I'm not even going to think about it being DC or any of the DC stuff going on around it or Mm -hmm. like just another, I don't want to go in just another hero movie, just this, just that, just another origin story. Like I just wanted to go to a movie and enjoy a movie because we don't know what this is involved in. You know what I mean? They've said this and they said that and they, they said that it will be part of the DCU eventually, but it might not be. Like, I just want to go to a movie. <laughs> I just want to do enjoy it. <laughs> right. And they, like, I legit th- forgot I was in a DC movie for, like, half the movie. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then he walked in. Uh, he was wearing, like, a Gotham Law sweater. I was like, oh, yeah, this is DC. I forgot. Like, I almost completely forgot it was, like, a hero movie. It was almost, like, just a sci-fi movie in my head. You know what I mean? I, th- I could see that. I could see that. I, was, I definitely like, got with, lost into it, and then when they they would say little things here and there, I yeah. think about halfway through the movie they they said Batman and Superman, you yeah. know, in Gotham City and in Metropolis. Oh, go to Metropolis for this. Go to Gotham for that, right? You know, or something. And like that was it, right? Yeah, yeah. It didn't even because I mean none of the Blue Beetle in my mind isn't like a big character, so mm-hmm. like, and they didn't have like unnecessary cameos or you know anything like they had in Flash or. You know, it was just a good movie. You know what yeah. I mean? They didn't I, draw your attention out and then make you think about, oh, well, is she, is she even going to be Wonder Woman anymore? <laughs> Henry Cavill's definitely not Superman. So, like, what's right, happening? Yeah. You know? It was... The movie reminded me of, like, how... How, like, uh, super, like the first Toby Superman was. Like, how he stumbled into his powers. And he didn't ask for this. And he didn't know what was happening. He didn't know how to use them. You know what I mean? 
yeah and then there's like the girl and the crush and he doesn't know how to navigate that and like <laughs> it was it was very like early toby mcguire spider-man but the way they disconnected yeah. it from everything was very like moon knight to me like this could be its own thing. It doesn't have to jump into like Justice League or DCU. Mm -hmm. Like this, they could very well make this Elseworlds, and it, nobody would even know the difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't have to be attached to anything, but if people like it and flock to it and enjoyed it, then it's easy for them to plug it in wherever they want. You know? Right. I think that was we were saying that a, a few podcasts ago. Is that? Why, why do they feel like they have to tie in every movie to every other movie previously filmed? Right. You know, or prior to it. You know, it was almost kind of getting annoying and fed up. <laughs> you know, and, and now we're, we're at a point in time where we're kind of burnt out on yeah. hero movies. I, I mean, think a lot it's of not just, are. it's not just, yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's very obvious and very publicly known. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every. Yeah. Everything that I see is like, it did bad because of this. It did bad because of this. But on every list, on every article, it's like, people are burnt out on hero movies. People are burnt out on superheroes. People are, you know, not every movie at the theater has to have a hero or a villain in it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I wouldn't necessarily say that people are burnt out on superheroes. I think collectors are really at, a, at, at like a stronger point than ever. Well, I'm you talking know, just with... movies in general and the casual viewer and you know what I mean? Just all yeah. the stuff that came from Marvel. It's just like, I think we said in the last podcast, it's like the the comics are great. You know what I mean? If you want these stories and you want more stories and, you know, new adaptations and things like that of all these heroes and villains, like comics are great for that. But yeah. as far as the movies go, it just feels like, We've gotten the same thing over and over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? So, mm. and it, it's like, if you look at what's playing, there was a time where it's like three of the nine movies were all like Marvel, DC, or both. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it's just crazy. Well, um, you know, we've we've probably been to the movie theater more times this year because of the podcast because we want to go mm -hmm. see all these movies, but also because they're they're force feeding it down our throat so fast you know yeah mainly marvel i feel like we've seen a lot of marvel movies not quite as many dc we've seen three realistically yeah i mean what did we see that was marvel though too you know what i mean i feel like it's pretty even through the last year because uh, we got black panther guardians ant-man and then we got black adam shazam blue beetle and uh flash am i missing some <laughs> movies we've I, seen I, we might be so maybe many, we're yeah. just, we just talked a lot about the tv shows just because i think yeah uh, i mean we were super into moon Knight when that was happening we 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 watched all the way through regretfully she hulk <laughs> yeah you know so that was marvel i feel like there was just a lot of marvel happening i think there's just been so many like the dc stuff and the announcements were very like like uh condensed you know what i mean they yeah when james gunn came in they announced everything all at once but we've also just gotten so much marvel news like with this happening this isn't happening this is getting delayed this isn't getting delayed so on and so forth you know so i feel like through the year we've definitely covered marvel more just because of all the news that's come out but i think we've seen pretty even you know what i mean I guess so. I guess we have seen more DC movies, but uh, I don't know. I guess it does just just feel that way. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird. You know yeah. what I mean? I think, I, I think uh, social media plays a big thing on it because I'm always just seeing Marvel stuff. And I feel like... Uh, I'm a I'm a way bigger DC fan than I am a Marvel fan. I'm yeah. I'm getting up there with with some of the Marvel characters. You know, I I'm starting to really like to collect um some Marvel books. But I'm definitely way bigger of a DC fan and I have to kind of go out of my way and search for the DC information that I'm looking for when it comes to social media and advertising and realistically right. feeling feeling like 
I'm looking for the news that should be in my news feed because that's what I look at all the time. Yeah, I feel like but that's also been I feel like that's also been like a reoccurring thing that we've talked about with DC too. It just doesn't seem like they they push their stuff or promote their stuff as well as Marvel is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's like a marketing thing or if that's like a evil conspiracy <laughs> gatekeeping <laughs> advertising yeah, I, key. I have no idea. It's it's like even with um even with the comics, there's a lot of big stuff that's happened lately in DC comics, but I don't see it anywhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we I you just scroll down um like instagram or something and you see marvel stuff you see spider-man stuff you see deadpool news like i do but i don't see as much dc stuff coming through you know what yeah. i mean and i don't know why maybe like i said maybe it's just because of all the announcements that they it was so like condensed and like during that time i was always dc stuff and james gunn is making people mad everybody's mad at james gunn and it wasn't even like valuable information you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's just people I mean, being upset. So mad at him. Why, like, why is everybody so mad about everything? I don't get it. <laughs> Dude hasn't done anything yet. Right. He's kind of leaked some information, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, Isn't that he's what not, we wanted, though? He He's not going to do anything for two years still. You know what I mean? So, what, yeah. what, what are we so worried about what he's doing? <laughs> like, Just let him do his thing. And then once it comes out, once you see a couple movies, then worry about it then. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, some kind of some some people are a certain type of breed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't know. I did see I did see one article when I was looking up some stuff about um Blue Beetle afterwards that the director from Blue Beetle said it was like re- refreshing to be a part of James Gunn's world in DC than the other one. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he was just scratching the back of his new boss or something, but he, right. it sounded like he enjoyed like having James Gunn come in and like what he brought to the table. So that's exciting. You know what I mean? As long as if the directors I mean, and stuff are yeah, feeling that's exciting good about for, it. For like even James Gunn being able to bring in Blue Beetle and, and do what he, you know, do his thing. Yeah, with it. right. Uh, I'm excited about James Gunn. Like we've we've had some things that we've said that we're like, why does he do this? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm always excited about James Gunn directing anything. Yeah, I, th- I feel so, like there's really nothing to that has disappointed us too much. We love Peacemaker. I don't know if that's <laughs> a James Gunn thing or if that's a John Cena mm-hmm. thing. Well, you James know. Gunn wrote that and did all of it, so. Yeah, but I, mean, is that, I also like it just because it's John Cena. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. I so feel I like, think that has a big part in you know in my head on why I like it so much. I feel like, though, if you recast John Cena before knowing it could have been John Cena, like, it still would have been a good show. Yeah. If you had John Cena and a different director, it could have been a train wreck. Yeah. You yeah, know what I, I mean? can see that, yeah. Like, you could have got somebody else big and musc- muscular. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. Um, but you could have got somebody else to play that and not even known it was supposed to be John Cena. It could have been good, I think. I think I think the team worked well, but I think James Gunn carried a lot of the weight in making that a good show. Probably. Yeah, um, I guess I guess you can see it in his angle choices and all that kind of stuff. He has a right. certain type of I don't know what you could say aesthetic, which I feel right. like they tried to kind of capture in this movie. You know, we we were on on that podcast, and um, I've, I'm I'm gonna mess up names now. Um, but somebody was saying that James Gunn had directed this movie, and I was like, I think they're mistaken. I don't even think we we ended up actually correcting no her, but uh, I was like, James Gunn didn't direct this movie, but then. Everybody kind of agreed, I felt like, and I was just like, I'm not gonna be the one to say anything. You know, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> just sit there and correct people. Um right. but uh, I feel like I feel like it was the colors, you know what I mean? Like I feel yeah. like James Gunn does really good like color and like especially you see like Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy, 
and i feel like the color palette in this one was still that kind of like retro 80s especially going into the old like blue beetle cave coming from like the retro feel of guardians into like the retro feel of this with the older stuff i think that probably helped make you think that it might have been a james gunn thing maybe and i mean i feel like james gunn is just thrown around so much right now with dc that it's easy to get that confused you know what i mean oh yeah no doubt but um it, it definitely once that was said i felt like and i really thought about it i really felt like they were trying to kind of adapt yeah. that type of style just knowing what they were heading to in terms yeah. of dc because i'm sure all everybody involved with getting james gunn over to dc knew six months before we did probably you know they probably just did the whole movie and then put a James Gunn filter over it. <laughs> There's just a James Gunn filter it's AI. at DC now. It's an AI editor. Just, yeah, just they James just, Gunn. They just swiped on uh, Snapchat until they found one they liked, and uh, <laughs> they just put it on there. Yeah. But, that was yeah, the suit. I, right. Um, but Blue Beetle, I think, do you want to start with a rating or you want to come back to a rating? We'll come back to a rating. Okay. We'll come back um, to the rating. What did you think of like how he how the movie started up until like him getting into the suit for the first time? I really enjoyed the way that it started. Um it gave me like you said that retro eighties vibe, so I kept f- mm-hmm. feeling like I was like, is this supposed to be in the eighties? No. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then I'm like, oh qu- quickly no. I-, I liked the pace and I liked the intro. Um of the movie, especially when they were kind of introducing like his uncle Rudy, because I have an uncle Rudy, and you know, shout out because he watches the podcast and sometimes, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, he collects comic books and plays guitar. He's he's really cool, and he reminded me a lot of my uncle Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I was just like, I have an uncle Rudy, and then George Lopez comes out, and then he's acting the way that he's acting, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, dude, this is totally my uncle. <laughs> like, they just looked at my family and said really <laughs> yeah let's, yeah let's mimic I, thought, it. I thought it was cool like they really took i don't even know how long it was it didn't even seem like the intro was that long until he got the suit on for the first time you know yeah well but they you really started to figure out like who this character was pretty quick and like where his heart was and where his like like where his morals lie and stuff like that. Like, I think they did that really well. And you really started to understand the family dynamic and you really started to understand like, like how he feels towards everything that he was doing and why he was doing the way that things that he was doing and standing up for Jenny, like right at the beginning. Right. You know, I think that was really cool. Like he just couldn't help himself. Right. Yeah. He, he just wants, he, it seemed like he was trying to be the best person like he could be with the things he was giving you know what i mean and that's just for the sake of being a good person yeah and like he went off to college and he found out that his family was struggling while he was off to college he was like i would have dropped out like i would have come home i would have been here for you i would have done this i would have done that and they were all like you needed to do that for the family like and you just really started to feel you almost started to feel like you understood and you were almost part of the family you know what i mean (laughs) right yeah you were like yeah, yeah, you should have stayed there and we could have helped the family. And like, <laughs> you were in the neighborhood, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you're but, talking to your cousin or something and you're like, right. no, no, no. All right. Yeah, I kind of, I, I felt that way. And one one thing that I wanted to ask um, when we were on the uh, World at War podcast, what, um, but nobody else really seemed to watch Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you I, watch Cobra I Kai? I haven't either. Oh. Every time I go to watch it, I'm like, there's a lot of seasons of this already. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess I'm, now. I feel like I feel like every time I go to see it, there's more seasons, you know, naturally, because that's what happens when you don't watch something. Right. I'm like, I feel like I wanted to watch them like, oh, there's three seasons. I'm not going to watch this right now. And then I'm like, oh, there's four. Oh, I'm not going to watch right. four seasons. Of- I'm not going to watch five seasons. Of this. Right. Well, I guess it's been out for like four years now. Right. I've watched some. Uh, some stuff they did on YouTube, like when the seasons came out and they were guests on other channels and stuff that I follow. So okay. I kind of knew him, but I didn't know him well enough to, okay. not on like the level that you knew him. 
I wanted to see if you you kind of saw the resemblance to uh, his character Miguel okay. in Cobra Kai, because I I honestly saw a resemblance, and in the first ten minutes of the movie, it was hard for me to not see Miguel. Yeah. So every time they called him Jaime, I was like, "Who's Jaime?" <laughs> That's not his name. Yeah, you know, in my head. So I just kept seeing. Miguel, if you watch it, you're, you'll you'll probably do the same thing and be like, "That's Jaime." Yeah, <laughs> you know, and do do the opposite. So, so here's watch, here's watch like episode one through three and and figure it out. <laughs> here's my question for you now, because you said that, like, did you feel like if you took the if you took the names out, like they never said Jaime or Miguel, like did you feel like it was just a natural progression, like this was Miguel's character in Cobra Kai, and now he's becoming Blue Beetle, or were you like? This shouldn't be happening because that's Miguel and Miguel would never do this. No, that's not at all. That's a hundred percent. You thought what? it was just a normal progression. <laughs> now that you're kind of saying that, right. like I could totally see that being connected. There's going to be some fan theory out there. The crazy <laughs> fan theory on how Miguel is Jaime and really? found his yeah. family and somewhere else. And uh, you know, <laughs> so did, here's the question though. Like, did they do it well then? Because, you saw the character, but you thought it was a natural progression. Like, you weren't taken out of the movie. You just thought it was a progression from another show. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I wonder if that's just, like, Zolo, which is his name. Right. His real name. So I Maybe wonder that's if that's just, just... him as a person. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. how Adam Sandler plays Adam Sandler in every movie. Right. Regardless of, of what he's playing. You know, and the, kind of the same thing with, like, Rob Schneider. Yeah. You know, well, I feel like I feel like it was really hard for me because uh, Tom Holland after like between Spider-Man movies, he was in Uncharted and I just like couldn't unsee it. You know what I mean? Right. I was like, why isn't he using like his superpowers? Like this doesn't <laughs> make like, any sense. You know what I mean? The web shooters. <laughs> so like, I feel like it's cool that you at least felt like it could have been like a progression or like it wasn't like taking you out of the story it just was kind of putting you into a different story you know what i mean yeah you know it was but like it, it definitely cool... was a thought in my head that i was like this could be miguel right you know type yeah. of thing. i thought it was cool because i mean from cobra kai then he he's already doing action stuff he's doing fighting he's doing stuff like that so i think it was cool that like he could use it, you know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. it's, he didn't look clumsy doing it. You know what I mean? Oh you know, no, absolutely! Everything not. he did was pretty cool. I think he does a lot of his own stunts in Cobra Kai, and a lot of right. his own fighting and stuff like that. So I think that's what kind of helped prepare him, because like he's been doing Cobra Kai for four years now, three or four mm -hmm. years. So he's probably been training on the side. He right. definitely was. Uh, I think I said this. When we were talking about, uh, I forget, I forget who's going to play Superman, uh, Cornswell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cornswell, I just remember his last name. But uh, we we're talking about him and how he needs to bulk up. But that's kind of what I saw with Miguel in in the first few episodes of Cobra Kai in the first mm -hmm. season. He's this real, real skinny kid, and then season two, season three happened, and he bulks up and he looks like he does in Blue Beetle. Really. Yeah, so I'm like, he's definitely fighting. He's definitely training, you know, to to be able to do those moves. So it wouldn't surprise me if he did a lot, does a lot of his own stunts. Right. Yeah, I feel I like don't that's know. the fun part of being like a combat actor. Yeah, I mean, in Cobra Kai, they're not wearing masks in a full suit of, you know, anything for the whole thing. So I wonder right. how much, I wonder how much, if at all, he was even in the Blue Beetle suit. You know what I mean? I feel that like that would be so disappointing. I feel like, I mean, that's how it usually goes. Wasn't it like, uh, it was like Infinity, no, uh, Civil War. Like Ant-Man's in most, like half of that movie at least. And Paul Rudd was on set for like a day. <laughs> it's always he just like went if they... and, and, and just ad-libbed over it into a microphone. Yeah. I mean, that's how they do it. Um, yeah, it's like, uh. Everything that I've seen from like the stuntmen react and all these things that I watch is like if an actor has if a superhero actor has a mask on, it's not them like almost 90% of the time or not 100. You know what I mean? Could have been too busy with Cobra Kai because he was he <laughs> yeah. did have that mask on pretty much the whole time right until the end. 
Yeah, I wonder if that's like uh I wonder if like we've said before, like I wonder if they stop putting like masks on big actors <laughs> like just to have them around and you get the FaceTime more. Yeah, and that's what I was like so upset about with the Star Lord because he never Star Lord. Has yeah, you said mask the, on. You said the same thing about Ant Man when we saw it. Yeah, like why? Yeah, Black Adam didn't even have his mask on at all during the movie. He doesn't have a mask. <laughs> 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 they just I... have like a like a nightwing like robin mask on him yeah right <laughs> <laughs> or a wig a painted, <laughs> but it paints on the, the remember that hairline that the original black yeah, adam had? Yeah. <laughs> that crazy hairline. And like horrible ears that don't look like they're connected <laughs> at all like, yeah they didn't even mess around with his ears no they didn't at all no they just um, left the rock be the rock i just I think it'd be crazy if uh, if The Rock had, like, a Nightwing mask, but, like, when he has the mask on, it's not him, and you're like, that's obviously not The Rock. Like, <laughs> right. They just swap him. <laughs> oh, man. And maybe the uh, head would have matched. That was, the, uh, that was The Rock with the big head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, that's not The Rock. <laughs> that's not the same. Well, I do. I, there were a couple of spots of Blue Beetle that I was not, like, super thrilled about the CG. Like, the rest of the movie like looked great to me. There, like one city shot, I was like, "That looks like a projection. <laughs> like that I looks like it. a hologram." I saw it. Um, and then when, what is the what is the bad guy? It was the blue beetle dude, and wow. then the bad guy. I just when their when their suits are like going over their face, is like you could see the swap between like Carapex. CG face, Carapex. Yeah, Carapex. Oh, for they never reason, said it in the movie. Yeah, weird. They never oh, said no, it, I, but that's his name was, because I saw it. At what was she calling Walmart. the suit? I guess is what I was thinking. Oh, uh, or, or oh, I'm not I forget. Or, yeah. Orca, 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 <laughs> orca whales. <It's> orca. <laughs> <laughs> but him and uh, him and oh boy, like there was one oh, point. Boy. Oh boy, oh boy. That's how that uh, CG made me feel. I was like, oh boy, oh boy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there was I saw like those... I saw a city shot when it like zoomed out really fast or something, yeah. and I was like, "That doesn't look right." But I think she he was like sitting outside with his dad or something too, and they were like looking at the city, and I was like, "That looks like hologram." But maybe they they were probably in a volume. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably looking at a volume or a green screen, one of the two. But yeah, or like what's that? Uh, what's those screens that like Mandalorian is filmed with? Volumes. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what you meant by uh, that. <laughs> the I did think I they <laughs> I didn't know this at all until we were in uh the World of War podcast. I had no idea this was supposed to be in El Paso. I was like, Me This neither. is Miami, hundred percent. This is Miami. Me too. <laughs> like this is what do you mean this is El Paso? Me too. But I guess that's what I was I, gonna say, uh is like the beginning and the logo. It looks like it it's supposed to say like Miami something yeah. on it like and, and you see because even the the neon lights and everything you just right. can see those t-shirts with like a triangle on it and then <laughs> it just says miami and that type of blue beetle font right yeah that's what i thought i thought it looks like sure. that just says miami <laughs> <laughs> yeah like blue miami blue Mi- miami miami heat. <laughs> miami, miami heat. Chicago Bulls. what chicago bulls Dude. Oh, I'm not doing this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if it's not the Lakers, it doesn't matter. Oh. Um, <laughs> how many how many people just got mad if they heard that? Um, I feel they like people either the love they either love the Lakers or they hate the Lakers. So. Yeah. Um, Same thing with like the Yankees. I I know speak of basketball. <laughs> I speak baseball. I can speak baseball. <laughs> Hit ball. But I can't speak Hit basketball. Ball, throw ball. Catch ball. Yeah, run. Right. <laughs> he broke his ankle. I, mean, I, I it... watched ba- basketball a little bit just because uh, my bass player, Kamran, refuses to not watch every single Magic game there is. Really? So, yeah, so I constantly hear about that. And he's actually the uh, announcer now. Well, doing something with the announcers for really? the magic. <laughs> I'm like, I, oh, you, dude, you completely removed me from sports, and I thought he was playing Magic: The Gathering. Like, that's... no, ma- ma- the Orlando Magic. <laughs> yeah, I got it now. I got it now. Oh man, 
Um, yeah, I mean, the rest of the movie was kind of just more of the same, like just good progression, like good character building, family building. Um, the part where grandma was a crazy like soldier or something with the cartel or who oh, yeah, knows dude. what. She was definitely like in the cartel for she sure. Puts, she puts her braids down and grabs a big gun. She's like, let's go. Yeah, she just like, could, oh, she okay. and she refused to say anything. That's a story for later. That's a story for later. No, nah, right, yeah. nah. you know, I'm like, that's cartel crap right there, man. <laughs> There's something you going know? on. You were in the Mexican mafia, weren't you? Like, <laughs> you know, you know what you're doing, right? Because she knew how to hold that gun a little too well. I mean, she was doing it, and there was no way that she was CG. She held oh, that no. gun. <laughs> she, she actually, though, I did have one thing with that. She's sitting there yelling, shooting the gun, and it's it's rapid firing, dude. She's holding down that trigger, and yeah. she actually she's shout, shouting and aiming like this, and doing exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, there was no recoil to it, and I was like, why didn't they just like shake her or something? Like, <laughs> shake, <laughs> grandma, shake. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the old blue beetle, what's his name, Ted or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, he made it. He made the gun without recoil. That's why. Oh, there's no recoil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he made it. He made you a know, special. You know that that makes sense. He he re- he re- removed physics. Yeah. He yeah. couldn't figure well, out how to do it in uh the blue beetle suit, you know. It, it there's the something air. built into the gun with like springs and absorption and uh it it absorbs the recoil from the barrel so yeah, it, it it's a whole thing. I would get into it, but you wouldn't understand. Oh, sh- what issue? <laughs> what? What issue is that from? No, I have the blueprints oh yeah okay. yeah he he discussed it with me before he built it i gave him some critiques and oh uh, you helped on set no i helped in real life with the original blue beetle oh with ted you knew ted yeah yeah i, oh. I was good friends with him that's why the uh <laughs> mid credit scene excited me so much because i thought he was gone you know oh congratulations yeah, my friend my friend, friend might come back yeah he's gonna replace me isn't he uh yeah probably uh-huh. he, he knows more about blue beetle than you do yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to just become an all Blue Beetle podcast all right. with the homie Jake and Ted. And Ted. And Ted. Cork. Ted, Ted, and Teddy. Ted, Ted, Ted. Ed, Ed, Nettie. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, what was, what, did you have a favorite part of the movie other than the grandma being part of the cartel? Oh, the okay. Not that it was my favorite part, because that almost sounded way bad. Because I almost answered it way too fast. Because <laughs> I was almost just straight up like, "When the dad died." Oh, <laughs> you know. But that was actually not to say that that was my favorite part of the movie. But it, it, I cried. Both yeah, it times. was emotional. It was like super. It was like very. Uh, it, it was very uh, Guardians three, and my emotions were rocket. <laughs> you know. What yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, why to are the they, point why where are they like, doing this to me? I forgot that I was looking at a screen. I forgot that I was in a movie theater. <laughs> I I was just so in the moment. I felt like I was watching this happen, and then I'm like, he can't even mourn with his family because he's getting taken. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, dude! Uh, dude I was just in the I back was, row, ugly crying. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. You know, I said I was gonna cry because uh, Mikey didn't say cowabunga yeah. but that yeah. like we, this one actually made me cry i is was it, joking is, at the other one <laughs> is it weird that i think i was more sad when rocket died like i feel i feel like i was closer to rocket than, you know than this guy. my my fiance nicole said the same thing really yeah and i was like how but she was crying because i looked over and she was crying oh yeah i teared at, up i teared up for sure but I um, think I think during Guardians Three, I teared up like multiple times. Yeah, that one she was really crying, but she yeah, was like, th- they like gave animal. it back to us. It was like, okay, okay, everything's okay, and then they're like, yoink, and they ripped it back out. Of yeah, you. and then they give it back. She's like, oh, do you want it back? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yoink! <laughs> it's like no, rocket. No, You're right. Yeah, and then but, uh, yeah, this one was definitely emotional too. It was very similar to me. Like there. I feel like this had a lot of the good elements of a bunch of movies into one movie, and it just was a good movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think it was great. I don't think it was the best movie ever, but it was far from the worst DC movie we've seen in the last few years. Yeah, 
you know, I uh, I wanted to walk out of that theater screaming. Really? Yeah, just because I was very, I I liked it a lot, and I I almost want to go as far as to say that I liked it more than Black Adam. I just also remember the feeling of Black Adam when Henry Cavill came out on the screen. Yeah, that that one really, I was like, oh, it's happening, you know, and <laughs> yeah, nope, another yoink. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like. I feel like this movie had more dynamic than it was way more dynamic than Black Adam. Black Adam I just felt like I felt like you know it had I mean? a very good story though. I feel like that was like With your, the your action movie. movie. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel like that was like your action movie. It had enough filler just to like give the action some purpose. Yeah. But like I feel like by the time like action happened in Blue Beetle, you were like you understood why it was happening. You know what I mean? Like for him. you would have reacted similar if you were in the same situation you know what i mean the yeah dude they're just being, screaming right yeah being angry or even when the dude like they connect and jaime doesn't kill him and then he grabs her and walks into the fire and blows himself up and he's like you're like he like there was something that happened and you felt it like you knew exactly he got all his memories back and saw what happened and like yeah it was it was wild. You know what I mean? Like there were definitely parts of this movie that were like, "Holy cow!" Yeah, full full of ups and downs. You know, um, finding I don't know. It was I think yeah, it was definitely better than Black Adam, but Black Adam. But I feel like the the thing is everything surrounding with Black Adam. Is what makes me always like, yeah, not like Black Adam anymore. You know, right? Like if if they were to still be able to bring Superman back, or if they would have done it without Henry Cavill and with Henry Cornswell or Harry Cornswell, whatever his name yeah. is, I forget now. But uh, you know, done it with I'm that. I'm still just then... irritated. Like you didn't need Superman. <laughs> like you could have yeah. had a movie in between. You know what I mean? And well, everything would have been. They different. did because I feel like that's the whole thing you know everybody wanted to see that fight because that's an iconic fight that's a big key book so i I had shazam coming out after that like you could have done different things and like i don't know you like painted yourself into a corner with that one i feel like now that was the rock doing i feel like that was the rock being the rock and being like no we have to do this right and didn't listen to dc and now he like burnt his bridge with them yeah yeah Anyways, Blue Beetle, good movie. Yes. I want your rating now. What's your rating? My rating? I really don't have any reason to knock it, to be honest. You know, there was like two frames of the movie that I was like, oh, CG's not, you know, could have been better. But it definitely wasn't no falling babies. No. No. <laughs> He's like, no. No. It definitely, you know, I was like, yeah, that could have been a little bit better. Um, let's. I'm going to give it a nine. Really? I'm going to give it a nine because I feel like I gave Black Adam a seven or an eight. So I feel like this one has to be a nine out of ten just because the heritage that was in there, um, yeah. the family setting, the story, the ups, the downs, the heart, you know, pulling on my heartstrings like that. If you pull on my <laughs> heartstrings like that, you're going to be one of my more favorite movies. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and it kind of just set up like a whole Blue Beetle universe on its own, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, they could. I feel like they could go a lot of different ways with this. Let's go with the TV show. Let's do a show. Oh yeah, we didn't I'll even talk about six that. Hours we that. talked about that in um on uh, the World of War podcast. There is a show coming. It's not with Jaime or whatever his name is. But it's with Ted and Buster. You're going to have to help Booster me Gold. One. Booster Gold. Yeah. There's supposed to be like a comedy series coming out with them. But I think that they said that's only if Blue Beetle does well. I mean, I think I we're at like, like a quarter of the goal. I feel like Warner Brothers always has that stipulation where I feel like, I feel like that's Marvel will be like, this is what we're doing. Here it is. You know what I mean? We're going to tell our story regardless. We're yeah, like, take it. <laughs> we're, Warner Brothers will be like, you liked it, but you didn't like it enough. Goodbye. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, 
you're never getting it again. Right. So we'll see. Um, I think I'm going to give it, I feel like I'm going to give it an eight and that's high because that's I came out of the, you. the, I came out of the theater thinking six, but after like sitting with it and talking about it, not twice, like this is a good movie. Like, you know, yeah. like I said, I don't think it's a great movie. Like, I don't think it's the best movie, but yeah, you make the point. Like it's way, it's, I think it's way better than black Adam. I like, I feel like I'd only watch black Adam again because of the rock. You know what I mean? Not yeah. because of anything else. And um, most people won't watch black Adam again because of the rock. Because of the rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, eight. Yeah. I think eight's good. Eight out of 10 and a nine out of 10 rounds it up to an 8.5. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We need, we need some more sound effects and, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, we need we yeah, need to get a soundboard going. I think I have one. Oh, you had like claps or something in our first episode on. Oh, Riverside. I got one. I got one. We're looking for a uh, a uh, uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. I was hoping they had like those rap horns or something. Yeah, the air horn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eight point five on... out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today on Lights Comics Action. Okay. All right. We're that's done. Enough. That's enough. <laughs> I'm done. Um. Yeah. Uh. Don't, I don't really have anything else to say about it. I think it was the. I'm trying to think of like another DC movie that I liked better. In oh, Batman eighty nine. You're going all the way to 89. <laughs> this is no, the I'm, best DC I'm, movie I'm, since I'm 89. Just, no. I'm tell me. Just tell saying, me. I, there's, there's probably a better one. I mean, I'm excluding like the Batman and Joker because now those are Elseworlds. So I feel like. Still yeah, they're DC. Though. They are DC, but I don't think they're not part of any universe except for their own. So like those it's stand. Multiverse, bro. It's the multiverse. It's the multiverse. Is, is across the Spider Verse not part of any universe except its own? Yeah, that's no. a lie. <laughs> uh, that's a lie. But I, I think if we're, I'm excluding those. So I feel like James Gunn Suicide Squad, I liked. Other than that, like, I mean, I like a lot of the Harley stuff. Like, I watched Birds of Prey, and I didn't think it was a bad movie. You know what I mean? A lot of people apparently just people didn't, watch didn't it. like that one. Yeah, but I, I, don't know. I liked it. Well, oh, people have problems with women leads too, so screw them. <laughs> Harley freaking Quinn. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah. Good movie. Ah, Very good movie. movie. <laughs> Very good. Very good, <laughs> sir. Thank you. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good. But, yeah, I think. Uh, I think this is a great movie. This is one that I'm probably going to have to go back. You know, you went back for Ninja Turtles. I think I went back for Black Adam. So I'm going to have to go back. You did. You did two go more back times. for Black Adam. You were like yeah. there the next day. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to go back two more times for, for Blue Beetle. And then I'm going to buy like a collector set, whatever. You you did buy the tin. You I bought did. the tin I on did. the way this in, is dude. The start of the tin. I think I want to start picking them up as we go and see them. Just really? so. Yeah, because I remember AMC, the thing is that we don't go to AMC, but they almost got me to go there because they had a Spider-Man head. It was a Miles Morales right. head that I, you would uh, put popcorn in. I almost went to AMC, too, because I was going by myself, and it's two, like three minutes from my house, <laughs> and I was like, I'm driving the half hour. <laughs> yeah, we, we go out of the way for the better theater, for yeah. sure. Just AMC is just so crappy every single time. So, well, you know, sponsors, and we'll talk about you better. Not really, but... <laughs> I, well, I feel like it's the AMC that I go to, too, because, like, when we went in, back... Yeah. When we went back to Turtles, we did go to an AMC, a different AMC, and it was nicer. But it was it was also, like, the one that we go to is so loud. Like, you can't hear other people talking. Like, like you almost feel like you're in the experience by yourself. You know what I mean? Right. Where, like, when we saw Turtles, like, there was somebody behind me talking the entire time, and I felt like I was sitting, like, in their mouth. That's how it was like. Like, they were talking. You know what I mean? Like, they were having the conversation with me. Like, uh, you're right. 
No, I don't want that experience. It's like, like I, oh. if, if I had the volume, I would be clicking it, turning it up. You know what I mean? Right. But, but uh, what it oh it was Shazam Shazam two we went it was the first time we went to uh, imagine it was so loud no I thought it was uh there was one that we went to AMC we went to AMC for one movie and that was it and we're like that's the last time we're doing that and you were getting oh, kicked Ant-Man. your it was Ant-Man. your seat was broken yeah it was Ant Man like I said I think that's the one that's the one by us you know what I mean yeah other than other than like people talking, like the AMC that we went to when we went back to Turtles wasn't that bad. It wasn't a bad experience. It just wasn't recliners. You know what I mean? It's not recliners. Yeah, um, I mean, I I I like uh, paying a few dollars less actually for those recliners. Well, yeah, it depends on when you go. I don't know. I can go the AMC thing. Like their their rewards program sounds really good though. I think they they have one at Imagine, but I don't think it's they as have good. one. I but do I don't want think to get it's it. as good because the AMC one is like free three free movies a week. Well, this as one's, long as you this pay one's this. completely free. You don't pay pay twenty five dollars a month for it. But I mean, three movies a week. Yeah, but why do you need to go to the <laughs> movies that much? We're already complaining that we have to go to the movies so often. <laughs> I'm not complaining because I have to go to movies. I'm complaining because I have to pay for the movies. <laughs> dude, dude, hold up, hold up. The guy that hates going to the movies is going to get the AMC pass for three movies a week. <laughs> for the movie for the movie theater I don't want to sit in. Yeah, that you always are like, well, not my couch, don't like it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but, I would have went to see Barbie. I would have went to see Oppenheimer. I would have went to see Mario Barbie. when it was in theaters. I literally what? only went to the movies we went to together. Really? I've met yeah. a couple more times than that. I like the drive-in. I go to the drive-in a lot. Actually, I, I love the drive-in. Back home, there was a drive-in, and there was like a spot on the edge of it. You could sit on the road. <laughs> you could see over the fence. <laughs> That's great. Just tune in. You're like, yes. Right. I just remember I would always be driving home, and I'd be like, oh, what movies are they watching? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's now I got fine. the van, dude. Like, I should just put a bed in the van and just go to the drive-in. That's what we should do. Yeah. We should just cuddle on a bed in the van. And... That sounds like a plan, actually. I, think... I call yeah. Little Spoon. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, man. Blue Beetle, nine. what did we say? 8.5 out of 10 between 8. the two of us? 8.5 out of 10. Point... <sighs> <sighs> <Okay. laughs> um be sure to go check out um world of wars comics their uh, youtube tommy had us on to talk about blue beetle it was a live a little live podcast there was a there's a couple issues they're on the west coast dealing with the storm right now so hope tommy's doing all right we're gonna have to check on him man yeah i'll I'll have to shoot him a text once we finish up here right on uh other than that just check out the description for things like free money and get ten dollars when you use our link to sign up for whatnot use it anywhere on the site 10 percent off w.gg when you use code collective comics at checkout and until next time this has been collective comics <laughs> we'll see you <laughs>